All right, we're going to do a study on the book of Revelation. All right, so what we're going to see is that this is actually really simple, really easy to understand. You know, I think it took me probably reading this book, you know, a hundred times, I guess, until I finally realized, man, this is the same thing that we're reading about all throughout the Bible. It's incredible. Really, there is one requirement, however, in order to understand the book of Revelation, and really, that requirement is faith. I, I, it's so important to believe, to know, and to understand that these are the words directly from God. Alright, so having said that, let's begin. Revelation chapter 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly be come to pass and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John who bear Rick excuse me who bear record of the Word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand John to the seven churches which are in Asia grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne and from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood <clears throat> alright so let's uh, make a comparison if you will um, right here in verse 5 the first begotten of the dead. Jesus Christ is the first begotten of the dead. Now, this is the same thing as saying the first resurrection. Alright? In Revelation 20, it says, Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. Jesus Christ is the first resurrection the first begotten of the dead all right and then of course in first corinthians 15 we read all about this and maybe you've heard people call this chapter the resurrection chapter I don't call it the resurrection chapter, I call it 1 Corinthians 15, but nevertheless, it does talk about the resurrection. Alright, so let's start here in 1 Corinthians 15, for since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Then comes the end. Alright, so for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. So this is really simple. Yeah, it, it's just so simple. Alright. It's difficult when you've been told so many lies by so many people and their lies contradict the plain language of the Bible 
it's hard I get it and it it angers me because you know when you're a new believer and you want to learn the Word of God and you're hungry for the Word of God and then you listen to a preacher and through time you realize that preacher doesn't know anything more than you do a preacher is a smoother talker and he pretends to be smart and he dresses real nice but at the end of the day he doesn't know what he's talking about and so this is why it's so important to believe these words are from God directly from God and once you have that faith and I think things will start to become clear and you realize you're not you know making these great big gigantic calculations it's real simple in fact it's it's the, the other way around it's really easy to see what the scriptures are talking about so let's go back to Revelation 1 make no mistake about it Jesus Christ is the first resurrection the first begotten of the dead all right and then of course just a reminder here just a reminder that Christ is the first fruits afterward they that are Christ at his coming so our resurrection which is really Christ's resurrection because we are following him he has led the way our resurrection the time of our resurrection is when he comes in the clouds of heaven all right and that's emphasized all throughout the Bible and one place I'd like to always point out is Matthew 24 Mark 13 Luke 21 where it talks about when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven his angels gather together his elect that is when we are resurrected just like what we read in first Thessalonians 4 where it says in a moment in a twinkling oh wait a second is am I in the wrong place here was it first Corinthians 15 in the moment in a twinkling of an eye uh oh yeah it, okay first Corinthians 15 in a moment in the twinkling of an eye in first Thessalonians 4 it says the Lord himself shall descend from heaven this is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven with the voice of the archangel with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air all right this is one big event all right <clears throat> all right so let's go just keep that in mind this is not rocket science this is, when people start splitting this stuff up to different dis dispensations then you gotta know they're lying they're ignorant they don't know all right, they've been lied to and they believe the lie rather than believe the simple easy plain language of the Bible okay let's go back to Revelation 1 verse 6 and has made us Jesus Christ has made us kings and priests unto God and his father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever All right, right now we are kings and priests unto God alright and, and compare that with Revelation 20 alright we are kings and priests unto God first of all it says and I saw thrones all right and they that sat upon them talking about us we are kings unto God and judgment has already been given to us that are born of God and that judgment is everlasting life and that judgment has already been made it cannot be changed so we have eternal life everlasting life we are kings unto God now in verse 6 it says 
they shall be priests of God and of Christ. We are right now priests of God and of Christ right now. We are called to preach the gospel to every creature. Right? Now we can go back to Exodus 19 and see that the children of Israel is called a kingdom of priests. Alright? We Christians today are a kingdom of priests. Right, well, I'll read that here. Give, let me get this first, I guess. First of all, let's read Exodus 19, verse 6. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. All right, first Corinthians, or I'm sorry, first Peter chapter 4. Or no, I'm sorry, first Peter chapter 2. Uh-oh. Pardon me. First Peter chapter 2. Ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth <clears throat> the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which have not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Alright, so, 1 Peter 2 says we are a royal priesthood. Exodus 19 says we are a kingdom of priests. Revelation 20 says we are priests of God and of Christ. And, of course, Revelation chapter 1 verse 6 says he has made us kings and priest unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so. Amen. Now, in Matthew 24, we read the very same thing. Don't let anybody deceive you and trick you into thinking this is a different coming of the Lord. All right, all you have to do is connect the dots, believe the words that you read. All right, in Matthew 24, Jesus says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with power and great glory and he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds and from one end of heaven to the other so alright so this is the same thing alright and just like I mean when we read 1 Corinthians 15 and when it says in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump same thing or we're going to be changed from corruptible to incorruptible from mortal to immortal in 1 Thessalonians 4 the Lord himself shall descend from heaven and we shall be caught up together with them. It's the same thing that we're reading all throughout the Bible. Don't let a liar tell you that this is the first of two comings of the Lord Jesus or first of two resurrections. All right, it, It's the same thing. It's the same thing is going to happen. It's all throughout the Bible, it's one thing. All right, when it says the first, <laughs> the first, um, the dead in Christ shall rise. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together. There's not going to be uh, ten billion years in between. This is going to be on the same day at the same moment. 
All right, just like what we read in 1 Corinthians 15, every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then afterward they that are Christ that is coming. Every man in his own order, so it's only right for the dead to rise first, and then we're going to be lifted up with them. All right, we're going to see this, and it's going to be a good thing for us. It's going to be a very bad thing for them that are not saved. Right here it says, All kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. So everybody's going to know. It's not like the Left Behind movie at all. When Jesus comes and we're resurrected, it's gonna, there's going to be no doubt. I mean, not only are all the people of the earth going to know, every creature on earth is going to know. It's the way God has made us. Right, you got to keep that in mind. God has made all of us. He's made heaven and earth. He's made everything to know that this event is coming. And when it does come, everybody and everything is going to know. All right, it's going to be more spectacular. I'm sure of it. It's going to be more spectacular than uh, what you hear a lot of people talk about. Okay, And certainly more, more spectacular than the movie with Nicolas Cage. Alright. Alright, so where are we at here? No one, okay. So all the kindreds of the earth shall well. In in Matthew twenty four it says all the tribes of the earth will mourn. Alright, we can go to Luke twenty one and see that men's hearts are failing them for fear. Right? This is not gonna be Oh, where'd everybody go? What happened? You know, people. it's not going to be all of a sudden people are just disappearing. And, uh, you know, the unsaved are sitting around scratching their rear end, wondering where everybody went. Not going to be like that at all. Verse 26, men's hearts failing them for fear. People are going to have heart attacks. People are going to mourn. All the years shall well because of him even so amen I am the Alpha I'm sorry I am Alpha and Omega the beginning and the ending saith the Lord which is and which was and which is to come the Almighty there should be absolutely no doubt whatsoever that Jesus Christ is God all mighty all right we can go to isaiah here let's do this way mighty god who's the mighty god who's the mighty god well in isaiah what's it say here chapter 9 <clears throat> for unto us a child is born it's talking about jesus for unto us a child is born and unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful Counts, counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Alright, so Jesus Christ is Almighty God. God manifest in the flesh. Right, and that's very important, very important. I mean, come on, if you don't think Jesus Christ is God, who, who do you think is God? You? No, you're going to find out different. All right, so I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation. Now, for the life of me, I don't know why people want to say the wrath of God is the tribulation it's not and it's really dumb to even replace wrath of God with tribulation because the Bible never ever describes the tribulation as the wrath of God and it's only gonna be a tribulation period for those who are gonna die the second death it's gonna be very hard for them very hard you think we got it hard it's gonna be much harder 
for them that are not saved. And it's the Bible, again, never describes uh, the wrath of God as tribulation. Jesus even says, In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Right? I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation. Alright? So, this idea that we're not going to go through the tribulation, uh, that's stupid. It really is just stupid. I don't know why anybody would ever make that claim unless they're ignoring what the Bible says and they're relying on what a preacher says. All right. In Revel and I'm sorry, in Matthew 24 it says, For then there shall there be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor shall ever be. And then it says, After the tribulation is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, and we are gathered together. So clearly we are gathered together after the tribulation. All right? I mean, it, the Bible couldn't be any more clear. I don't know why people want to confuse stuff. It's, and, and this, again, this is another example of how easy and simple the book of Revelation is. Once you sweep, a, sweep aside all the bull butter, right? All the baloney and pit bull poop, right? Just sweep all that aside and just believe the words in the Bible. I, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. So let me show you just a verse that I love in the in the uh, book of Luke. In your patience possess ye your souls. So, and this is great. This is great. Oh, you know I had this one open already. Right there. Love that verse right there. In your patience possess ye your soul. So, uh, a little encouragement to be patient. The Lord is coming. You're going to have trouble in this world. But be of good cheer. Our Lord Jesus Christ has overcome this world. All right, and this is interesting. Uh, I, John, was in the isle that is called Patmos. Patmos is just a little island sort of uh, north of Egypt, I guess. Let's just take a quick look at it. And uh, it's kind of interesting. To me, it's interesting. You know, maybe not to anybody else. Patmos. And, you know, zoom in, take a little look, see. Kind of cool. I don't know why I'm weird like this, but I like to go in and take, take a look at stuff. Jonathan, Spiral of Stones. I, I, what? I don't know what's going on. John? Jonathan, I don't know what's going on there, but it's just interesting. And they call this the island of Patmos, right? So maybe this is the place, right? I don't know. Right, I'm not going to dwell. What is this here? Looks like it's blurred out. It is blurred out. I don't know what's going on there. Who cares? Uh, just kind of interesting to me. But anyways. John says, uh, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book 
and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Lo Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed in a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive for evermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Okay, so I want you to remember this, uh, you know, as we continue throughout the book of Revelation. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. Notice the the uh, the context, if you will, what what's being told, the things in the past, the current things, and then the things that are coming after. Just as just the same as Jesus is which w Jesus is the from which is and which was and which is to come the alpha the omega the omega the beginning and the ending saith the lord which is and which was and which is to come the almighty same thing write these write the things which thou hast seen and the things which are and the things which shall be hereafter. And I think it's um, it's really important to understand this very first chapter of the book of Revelation because it sets up the entire book. All right, starting with the very first verse, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show us things which must shortly come to pass and he sit and signified it by his angel unto his servant John so John is going to describe the things that the angels have showed him regarding things which must shortly come to pass alright so there's nothing absolutely new in the book of Revelation at all but there is clarity for the things which are coming. There, there are uh, additional details, if you will. <clears throat> but there's nothing in the book of Revelation that contradicts anything in the entire Bible. All right. For example, there's not a thousand year period coming after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. The book of Revelation never suggests it. There's nowhere in the scripture that even suggests it. And it's crystal clear by reading 1 Corinthians 15, by reading Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, 
1 Thessalonians 4, all throughout the Bible. You know, Daniel 12, all throughout the Bible. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, and that's it. That is it. In the moment in the twinkling eye, the last trump, the last trump is the end of the world. And when it's the end of the world, we are lifted up, we are resurrected to meet the Lord in the air. And when this happens, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Alright, now you've heard me talk over and over, and over and over, and over and over again, that there cannot be a thousand year period after Jesus comes. Alright, because Satan is loosed, and he gathers together his people, the unsaved people, just like before in the Old Testament when there was one nation of God and Satan was deceiving the nations outside of the nation of Israel. Now, today, the kingdom of God is available to whosoever believes, so Satan is bound. But then, at the end of the world, when we are lifted up into the air, the only people on earth are the unsaved. So Satan, once again, just like in the Old Testament, is loosed to deceive the nations, and his purpose to, is to go out and to gather them at our feet. And just like it reads in Genesis 3, verse 15, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Jesus is going to stomp on the head of the serpent, destroying all evil forever and ever and then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory so this is all consistent all throughout the bible everything that we read from genesis to revelation it's very simple all right it's very easy it's just there's one requirement and that is faith it's very important to believe the words that you're reading are directly from god just as god gave Moses directly the Word of God, so also is God giving us directly His Word. And we find it right here in the King James Bible. Alright, stay tuned for chapter 2.